Hi guys! Welcome to a very highly requested video of mine, how I prepare my shabu shabu. If you guys didn't know what shabu shabu is, it's a Japanese style of eating where you cook all your meats and veggies in a boiling pot of broth or water and it's served with some dipping sauces. I've been doing shabu shabu at home for years and I keep getting asked how I prepare it and I'm finally making this video to show you guys. There are a few main components to shabu shabu. There's the broth, the meats and veggies, and the dipping sauces. The beauty of shabu shabu is that you can throw in anything that you want. So my main veggies are napa cabbage, tong ho, otherwise known as crown daisy, corn, carrots, and mushrooms. So I'm gonna start off by giving these all a rinse and chopping them up and cleaning them really nicely. So starting off with the napa cabbage, I'm just going to cut off the end and remove each of the leaves so that I can give them a good rinse. Once they're all rinsed, I'll just cut them into smaller, more manageable pieces and stack them nicely onto a large plate. Moving on to the crown daisy. You'll need a large bowl or pot filled with water, and while that's filling up, I'm just gonna cut off the tough, dirty ends. Then I'll dunk them into the water and shake them around to give them a good bath. You'll wanna repeat this process a few times just to make sure they get super clean. I love cooked carrots, so I usually include them into my shabu. Just gotta peel these bad boys and cut them into small strips. I also love mushrooms. Today I'm using enoki mushrooms. Just gotta cut off the ends and rinse. Last, we've got the corn. I always throw this into the shabu first and eat it last. Just remove the husks and I find it easier to just snap it in half with my hands. Ooh, look at that presentation. Let's put that in the fridge while we move on. All right, now that you've prepped your veggies, let's start prepping the broth. So this is a little sheep broth mix. Uh, this is my favorite one to use. Little Sheep is a Mongolian style hot pot restaurant. They have locations in LA, OC, San Francisco, and New York that I know of. But it's definitely my favorite shabu place and they actually have their broth mix in the Asian market. If you can't find it in your Asian market, I'll link it down below. They should have it on Amazon. So what I like to do is split this in my duo pot. It's got two sides. I also got this on Amazon, we'll link it below. Um, I'll split this up in two sides and then I'll put my own spices on the, other, on the other side to make it spicy for my fiance. The second broth I like to use is dashi. This is what I got in Japan. This looks like little tea bags that you can boil in hot water. And it has this like seafoody umami flavor that I love. It's much milder than this one. This one's a little bit salty, but equally as good. And I'll put that in hot water, in a pot of hot water, and then I'll throw that into my electric burner, which also doubles as a grill. But I won't be using this today, so I'll put it aside. And this is also available on Amazon. I'll link it below as well. So let's get these guys filled up with water and bring them to a boil. There are a lot of other broths you can try, like miso, or curry, the possibilities are endless. And you can probably find some good broth ideas on YouTube or Google. So once these pots are heated, I'm gonna throw in two of the dashi bags into one of the pots and just let that boil for a few. I'm gonna be honest, this little sheep broth mix is pretty salty, so I like to just use half of the mix and save the other half for another time. You'll also be getting a ton of additional flavor from all the meats and veggies you'll be adding in. As for the spicy side, I'm throwing in about two tablespoons of Korean chili powder, also known as kochukaru, a dash of chili oil that I had saved, and a sprinkling of ghost pepper powder. Also going to be adding in some green onion stems and garlic cloves for extra flavor. Okay, not too sure what happened to the beginning of this clip, but I'm moving on to meats. So if you're a vegetarian or a vegan, 
feel free to include some tofu and just go ahead and skip forward a few minutes. I'm including some beef and fish and tofu and dumplings today just to show you guys how I do mine. Um, if you go to your Asian grocery store, you should be able to find these really thinly sliced meats. Um, this one is ribeye and I just try to get some that look really nice and marbleized and pretty fresh. But um, I get asked a lot how I gauge how much meat to get. So I'm having six guests, seven people including me, and I usually get about 0.3 pounds per person. Um, if you know that person or a friend is gonna eat more, maybe like 0.5 pounds per person, but you need to remember you're feeding them a lot of veggies and other things as well, so they'll get really full. I also got some fish today. I don't normally get fish, but sometimes I'll throw it in. This is tilapia. I'll slice them up into little fillets, marinate them in some sesame oil and some salt and pepper. These are some fish cakes I got in the refrigerated section of the Asian markets. Um, they come with a bunch of different kinds and I'll just slice them up really small so that they're bite-sized and ready to go. I've also got some pork and shrimp dumplings. I love having dumplings in my shabu. These are from the frozen section as well. And lastly, I have some tofu for you vegans out there. You can obviously throw some tofu and it'll be equally as good. So I'm just gonna prep everything and place them nicely onto a plate. I'm all about the presentation here, so I even removed the meats from the packaging and plated them onto my own plates. I just feel like it's more aesthetically pleasing, but if you don't want to do the extra dishes, that's totally up to you. Alright, now that you've prepped all the food, let's talk about my favorite sauces. So up here in the front, um, I've got some more traditional Japanese style sauces. I've got ponzu sauce here, which is like a citrusy soy sauce. That goes really great with some green onion in there, um, some Japanese chili flakes, and I have some yuzu as well. This one here is a goma sauce. It's a sesame, peanutty, creamy sauce, which goes great with vegetables. And lastly, my holy grail of sauces is this Chinese barbecue sauce. It's called Sa Cha. This, I love to mix in a dash of rice wine vinegar, soy sauce, and sesame oil. And then I put in a chunk of cilantro, green onion, and uh, garlic. This is my favorite sauce. I can't have shabu without it. I'll link it below. It's available on Amazon or at your Chinese grocery store. Oh, and really quickly, this is the spiciest dish you'll ever have. I got this at the hot sauce store at The Grove. Any specialty hot sauce store should have it, but its Scoville rating is 500,000. I don't even touch this, but Josh loves it. He has to have it with his shampoo. It's 100 times hotter than hot sauce, and it's called Hot Drops. You only need like one, maybe two drops in your sauces, but Josh puts like four drops in there. <laughs> but anyway, these are the sauces that we love and we cannot have shampoo without. So without further ado, let's get the table set up and get everyone here ready to eat. All right, so I'm just setting up the table real quick. I have my electric burner going. It's reboiling the pot again. And then I also forgot to mention that I have this portable gas burner, which if you're Asian, you probably already have, or if you camp a lot, you probably have one of these too. But this will be needed for the dual pot that I have over there on the stove. And then all you need for this is a little gas tank. Here's the finished product. There's my meats, soup, veggies, fish, more meats. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any other suggestions of your favorite way to prepare shabu, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys next time.